Let's do another easy video, Lisa, just for you. <laughs> now, here's what I want you to do. Because, yes, this will be on the test. Everything we do will be on the test. I want you to see that it's not that bad. I want you to do this. I want you to take this expression, 4x squared minus 5y. And I want you to evaluate this for x is equal to negative 2 and y equals negative 11. Now what do you think that means that we need to do here? Plug those in, right? So let's, let's do that. So what that means for me is that, and here's, you gotta be very careful about this. Every time you plug in, every time you're making the substitution, use parentheses. If you don't, you will get burned. So instead of x, I'm going to rewrite that as parentheses and then square. And what goes inside for the x? Negative 2. Negative 2. And we've got minus 5 instead of the y. Replace it with parentheses and you put in what? Negative 11. Now, do I have any variables left here? No. What I have is an example of order of operations. So do what's inside the parentheses first. Negative 2 is done, negative 11 is done. I can't do anything else with that. I then proceed to what after parentheses? Do I have exponents here? Yes. All right, so this is 4 times what's negative 2 squared? Negative 4. What does it mean to square something? Times itself? So negative 2 times negative 2 is what? That actually gives me a positive 4. And I've got the minus 5 times negative 11. Okay, exponents are done. Not really anything to do with the parentheses. I then go to multiplication and division from left to right. So what do I have here? Multiplication. So remember, remember how gluey it is? How sticky it is? So this, this is connected here. The 4 times 4 and the 5 times 11 is connected. So what's 4 times 4? Watch your signs. This kind of goes back to what we said earlier. I've got a negative 5 times a negative 11. What is that? Positive, positive 55. And then 16 plus 55 is what? Don't you dare say 61. 71. 71. I know some of you are going, how did you know I was going to say that? All I did was plug in numbers and evaluate. And, and I did the math, right? Well, let's try another one. If I take negative 3xy to the third plus 4 plus 7y, evaluate this when x equals 9 and y equals negative 1. We just need to make the substitutions, right? So look what I have for when I do this. I still have a negative 3, but instead of the x, I write what? 9. And I've got y to the third. Notice how I do this. I keep the parentheses for the y, and I keep that exponent there. So what goes inside the parentheses instead of the y? Negative, the one. negative 1. I just got plus 4, so that's nice and easy. <laughs> plus 7 times y is? Negative 1. Although I do have parentheses, I don't have anything inside the parentheses that I need to take care of. But I do have exponents. So this is negative 3 times 9. What's negative 1 to the third power? It's what? Ooh, careful about that. Wait, negative 1 to the third is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. No matter how many 1's you multiply together, you still get 1, right? But the sign is what's important here. I have an odd number of negative factors. 
So my answer will be negative. So it's a negative 1. Plus 4 plus 7 times negative 1. So what's negative 3 times 9 times negative 1? Because all of this is stuck together. What is the sign of all of this? It's a positive. What's 3 times 9? 27 times 1 is? 27. Plus 4. And what about 7 times negative 1? You could say this is just a minus 7. You could say plus negative 7. I don't care. I don't say plus negative 7. I can't do that. My brain is trained to see this as a positive 27. That's a positive 4. And that's a negative 7. And now that they're not stuck together, this is all addition and subtraction, so I combine these. So, you know what I would do first here? What two would I combine first? I would combine 27 and negative 7 first. Because what's 27 minus 7? 20. And then I've got a plus 4, so that's what? Now, see, I can do that because, again, what I'm seeing here in this problem is I'm seeing this as I've got a positive 27, I've got a positive 4, and I've got a negative 7. That's my thought bubble. So when it comes to addition and subtraction, the order really doesn't matter as long as you see it all as addition. As what am I combining together, what am I adding together? A positive 27, positive 4, and a negative 7. And just so you know that I'm not making this stuff up, what's 27 and 4 when you add those guys, since they're both positive? All of this right here equals a positive 31. And what's a positive 31 minus 7? 31 minus 7 is still 24, so it still checks out.